G'day everyone, I'm Sam and I'm going to uh, give you a brief overview of the uh, new job planning feature within Next Minute. Now you'll see if you're used to Next Minute on the left hand navigation there is job planning which sits directly above the timesheets feature. And I'm currently in the job planning view but there's not a lot to display to start with. And the reason we're doing this is we want you to um, just choose, pick and choose what you want to display on the, job on the job planning feature. So what you want to do is go into jobs on the left hand side and I've got a few example jobs I'll use uh, for this video now. And there's building a new house job, building a renovation job and I want to display both on the job planning calendar. So to do that just open it up, click on edit and then scroll down a bit just below the description for the job and you'll see a new button that says display on job planning. Simply select that one, scroll back up, hit save. So as mentioned I'm going to do that for a couple of different jobs. Just grab this building renovation job, hit edit, scroll down a bit, display on job planning. So it's that simple to pop this on the job planning if you've got any existing jobs you would like to display. Now it's worth noting on these uh, two example jobs I'm using, there is scheduled tasks within these jobs. So if I go into the uh, job here and click on scheduled tasks, you'll see that I've got a, a number that I've set up here just uh, for an example purposes, which is kind of typical stages you might run through when you're building a house. Now what will happen naturally is when you turn the uh, job on to display on the job planning calendar, if I go back here, it's going to grab all of those tasks as well as the job. And if I click on this little arrow to the left of the title of the job, you'll see there are those tasks. Okay, same for building renovation job. I think I've got three different tasks on that one. And there they are. Now immediately when you turn jobs uh, on to display on the job planning view, um, it is, is quite zoomed in and as you can see here we've got a, uh, a scroll bar to the left and the right. And I can see the days of the week as well as the month that I'm in. Now another um, area you can scroll is on the left hand side here. We can see the job title, the task titles and if I scroll to the right here I can see the job and task numbers. I can see the start date and end date of the job and the tasks the type if it's been assigned, the job status, the duration which is in total hours and also the percentage of progress through the job or the task itself. And I'll, I'll talk more on the percentage of the progress uh, shortly but we're just going to go back to the default view to begin with. Also if you've got a lot of jobs displayed here there will be a scroll wheel on the side. Obviously there's just two displayed so I can't scroll any further but you can scroll down through all of your jobs if you need to and as you collapse them that will just naturally disappear. Now I want to talk about the view options because obviously um, we might not want to scroll all the way left or all the way right so you might want to look at zooming in or zooming out up at the top and if I zoom out obviously you start to see a more condensed view of all of those stages of the jobs. Now one of the best options we feel is clicking on zoom to fit which will give you a, a proper view using the full area here um, for, the, uh, for the job planning of course. Now here's the uh, job just up the top here as you see the, the dark grey bar and these are the stages or the tasks I should say that I've chosen to naturally have underneath each job. This little blue line you see down here is actually the uh, date that we're on, today's date. And um, there's a few other options here as well before I get into how to shift these things around and how it's kind of configured. So up top there's also filters that you can run from this view based on your job types, your job statuses maybe. So if you want to display just all of your large jobs or whatever types you have set up. Same with the uh, statuses. You can also choose uh, how far uh, zoomed in the job planning is. So if you do a lot of little jobs, you might just want a week view. If you do a lot of really large jobs, you might want a year view. I've chosen month just as my default um, view option for this, this panel. 
I would strongly recommend just kind of playing with it and seeing what is um, what is best for you, I guess. Now it's worth noting as well that any archive jobs, if you have archive jobs that live um, over here on the left, they will not display on the job planning unless you choose to restore those or unarchive those jobs. Now um, there's also another thing I want to mention before we go too much deeper into how this thing operates, which is the search option. And if you just want to bring up one particular job you might be working on, so maybe it was the, uh, you know, you, you'd given it a title which was the customer's address, you can just search in here. And I'm just going to search uh, building new house, hit search and you'll see that the renovation one will disappear and we've just got building new house job. If you want to clear that search, just hit the little X there, hit search again and now it's brought back both of those jobs. So simple enough, just as searches usually work. Now what I will do, I'll go building new house, hit search again, and I'll make sure it is on zoom to fit. It is, which is good. What I want to show you is the PDF export, and this is extremely useful if you need to communicate um, the stages of this job to maybe a, uh, somebody who's working with you, a contractor perhaps. Maybe your client wants to see uh, kind of expected stages, how long they will take, start and finish date, that kind of stuff. Simply go PDF export. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate the PDF for us based on whatever this view currently is. If I click on this PDF down here, there's that view we were talking about. So what we can do is now just download that and send it off to anyone you need to. Maybe print it off if, if you want to uh, have a physical copy. Now let's get into uh, a few basics of shifting some stuff around. I'm just going to um, zoom out a bit. There we go. And I want to firstly show you shifting a, um, an entire job. So say there was a delay like a worldwide pandemic or something that kind of threw off your schedule. All you need to do is kind of hover over the uh, relevant job bar and just simply drag it. And you'll see the start and end date in that little black section there of when you plan to start and finish the job. Just let go and it'll naturally grab all of these tasks under the job and shift those with it. Now if you need to shift it back if you're going to start something earlier, same deal, just click and drag that, drop it, it'll shift all of those tasks as well alongside it. Now if you want to, you can also shift these tasks. So just mouse over, click and drag, and it'll naturally adjust the uh, job length up top. So the job length depends on the entire, um, the, the length of all of the tasks below a job, though you can display a job without tasks on this on this view if you want to as well, and I'll, I'll talk more on that later. Now um, if I shift one of these tasks out, it's not going to affect the start or end date of this job because this task is you know, not the first or the last one. So I can shift this around to wherever I'd like to shift it. Okay, if I want to actually extend the uh, expected time for one of these stages, just click down, left click down, and just drag it out, as you'll see here. I can do that from the right hand end or the left hand end if I plan to start earlier, and just release to, uh, to readjust that. Now what we can also do is um, if we need to add any additional tasks, for any reason to this view, you can simply right click on the name of the job and go add task. And then what that's going to do is naturally add a task down below. So I'm just going to go add task. And uh, for this one, I might just call it um, final landscaping. Set the date there. I'll, I'll leave that as is actually. Just default it and hit save. And there it is there's that new little task. And as it's the final one in the order there, if I naturally shift this one out, it's gonna shift the length of the job itself, which is pretty cool. Now, another way to uh, add tasks to this job, if you have any anything additional that comes up, is if you right click on one of the uh, existing tasks, you've got the ability to add a task above this or add a task below this as well. 
I'm not going to do that right now. Now, if you want to open up any of the uh, the details on these tasks, just simply click on it. And as you'd be familiar with, on the right hand side, you'll have a, a little task menu there with all of the individual detail of that individual task. And the same applies if you uh, if you want to click on the job as well. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you how it works is dependencies within um, the job planning. And what a dependency is, is ensuring that you can't uh, start one task until you've completed a previous task, which, you know, has to be done before you start. So a good example here is site preparation and foundations. I can't begin the framing on this house until I've got the foundations done. So if you hover over one of these tasks, you'll see a couple of little grey dots appear on either end. So I can just mouse over the grey dot there and a little hand will appear. And if I grab, if I click down, left click down and move this down to where the framing one is and then release that one, that is creating a dependency. And um, what that will mean is if this particular task changes, for example, if it gets longer, or if it's finished sooner, or in fact I decide that it needs to be moved, it's going to shift that particular stage of this uh, of this job in accordance with this dependency. And um, you can also make sure, if you want to, you can create multiple dependencies. So I'll create one from, from framing to roofing. And I'm also going to go back to that dot and grab one for exterior cladding, flooring and fixtures. And just release. So I've got two diff different dependencies on this particular item. And uh, of course, if you ever need to remove these dependencies, you can do so. So you can just basically right click on it and go delete dependency and it'll tell you which one you're actually removing. So you can select that one. So yeah, that's dependencies. Now, um, I, I mentioned progress earlier or percentage of completion, I guess, on, on the jobs or the, or the tasks. So I'll show you how that works. Now this little grey bar at the top here, if I mouse over it, you can see progress at 6, and that's 6%. All right? Now site preparation and foundations, if I mouse over this one, you'll see progress at 41, or 41%. And uh, when you mouse over these little tasks here, you'll see a little black arrow appear. And you can grab that and drag it along to update the progress of a specific task. And as you update that, it naturally updates the completion of the job. So it's it's a really good um, tool to to, to utilise if you if you kind of know how far through a particular task you are. Imagine um, you know if a client called and said you know how far through my site prep are you? You could give them a percentage, and they say right, well how far through the job job am I then? And you can actually give them a, a you know a good indication of how far through you are. So yeah. That's pretty much um, dependencies and uh, you know setting the, the percentage of the way through a job or a task that you are. The final thing I will mention in this job planning overview, of course there's, there's a lot more um, that you can discover on the knowledge base that we're doing as well, or obviously give us a call if you've got any questions or you need a hand with this, is setting up milestones. And what a milestone is, is basically, um, you, you add it as a task, but it's basically a point in a, um, a project you might reach that doesn't need to span out a certain date. It could be a meeting, for example, but you still want it to, to be on the, on the job planning. So to set up a milestone, basically, I'll, I'll use one of these existing tasks as an example. You basically right-click on a task or add a new one like I showed you earlier. Go task details, and you simply set the duration of the task to zero hours. And I might just rename this with to uh, meeting with client. Save that one, and now it's turned into a milestone. So yeah, that's pretty much the overview of job planning. I hope that was really helpful for you. Um, huge update for us, so we look forward to... Uh, speaking to you about it and um, stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.